Hey, John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law, where we help our clients leave no unfinished business. Now, today we're going to be answering questions about various taxes. If we don't address this, then what we could do is actually set up a situation where we're leaving more avoidable costs to our loved ones. That's one of the four horsemen of the estate planning apocalypse we really want to address. What are the estate tax implications for non-U.S. citizens? So this is a big problem for people who are not U.S. citizens. If you own assets inside the United States and you die, there's a chance that you're going to have a nasty surprise of an estate tax. Now, this is where it's not just citizens. The, the marker is U.S. citizens and domiciliaries. So people who live here in the U.S. with no present definite intention of leaving have access to the 12.92 million exemption amount. But if you are a non-domiciliary, non-citizen of the United States, so you are somebody who lives and works in Mexico, or Canada, or anywhere else in the world, then the estate tax exemption is not $12.92 million per person. It's $60,000 per person. And this can trigger a lot of bad consequences. I uh, remember a few years ago, I had a potential client where grandmother had passed away years before owning a $200,000 home here in Houston. And they wanted, the family wanted to know, how do we transition this from grandmother's estate to the kids who are entitled to it? You know, and just taking a look at things, I looked at it and said, all right, well, we're going to need to make sure that we get the estate tax paid, you know, $200,000 minus $60,000. That's 40% tax on the hundred and Forty thousand dollar difference. You've got about a six hundred or sixty thousand dollar tax that we're going to need to pay. They looked at me and said, "Wait, what?" And that's the key. There is this tax that if you are not living in the United States, it's very easy to end up in a taxable position just by owning a piece of real estate. So when you are a non-citizen, non-domiciliary of the United States, you have to look at what you own and how you own it because there's a real tax that's going to be imposed when you die, and nobody's going to tell you about it. One of the biggest problems we see is people buying real estate in the United States, and then they're kind of stuck because there's not a good way to get out of either the estate tax or triggering some income tax when you try and move it to a different place. So as a non-citizen, you always need to be mindful of this. If you're living here in the United States, your planning ends up looking like a citizen because you should generally have the ability to use that $12.92 million exemption amount. But if you're outside the U.S., you don't live here, and you start acquiring assets in the United States, you will rack up an estate tax bill very quickly. Now, remember, while I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer. So don't take the advice of some talking head on the internet. Make sure you talk to your own legal counsel about your specific circumstances. We're only dealing with generic advice right now. Also want to mention my firm offers a free five-day estate planning starter kit so you can start the process of planning your own estate with a quick set of daily email challenges that'll help get you in the right frame of mind to identify the questions you really need to be answering. You'll be spending about five to 10 minutes every day for five days answering these questions and putting you on the road to leaving no unfinished business. The link to start this five-day challenge is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got other questions about this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.